would like to show you today is how I go about replacing a motor on my Tarantula X6. The Tarantula X6 or JJRC H16 as it is also known uh, it uses brushed motors which means that they are not prone to failure but they can fail a little uh, easier than uh, brushless motors. They do not last as long. This motor has in fact now failed and what I do also when I uh, replace motors and this is actually the third time I'll be replacing a motor on my Tarantula X6. When I do replace a motor I take a permanent marker and I mark make a mark. Now these two motors have already been replaced but this one has failed again. Now I do do a lot of aggressive flying. These motors have not uh, failed yet but I do do a lot of aggressive flying. This is a toy quadcopter and it is really a lot of fun. It is my toy that I really enjoy doing aggressive crazy flying that I'll never use my camera uh, platform quadcopters ever for. But anyway, now this replacement motor has already failed again but uh, if you see how I treat the, this little quadcopter you'll understand why. Now bear in mind the prop guards have been taken off. I actually snipped them there but the reason I left this part is to protect the gear mechanism. Now when it drops into the ground it's going to hit that first rather than drop that in there and get a whole bunch of grass and dirt and all kinds of other uh, things that you don't want in the gear mechanism. It's, gonna, uh, it, it's, it's just going to give that little bit of protection there. Anyway, let's go ahead. Um, the motor I'm going to be replacing is that one. What we're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver. Right, got that one. You need a little holder. Anything that you can put the little screws and little parts in. Uh, you're going to need motors. I'm using the genuine uh, Tarantula X6 motors that I have ordered from Gearbest. Now you can also order these from Banggood and all a couple of other companies, but I'm getting the actual ones. The reason I have two here is one is a counterclockwise motor and one is a clockwise motor. I don't really care which is which because when I take out the motor, the color on the cables are actually going to show me which motor I need to replace so I don't have to worry about which is uh, um, counterclockwise and which is clockwise. Anyway, you need the, the, the motor and I would suggest a cloth because there's a lot of dirt which accumulates in those, uh, those gears and cleaning it out properly uh, during this process is advised. Right, let's go ahead and uh, disassemble the part that needs to be disassembled and replace this motor. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the prop. Now it's got that one little screw there. Let's take Right, and there you go. There is the prop off. Put that one side. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is if you are using the prop guard piece here or the entire prop guard is remove that. Now normally that would have screws there at the top as well which you have to remove first but since I've cut mine all I need to do is remove this little lens part. Right, there we go. Okay, that exposes this gear, which now, since the prop is off, just pushes out. Okay, so you can push that out and remove. Now, this is actually a gear that has worked, and you can see how much dirt this accumulates. Now, immediately, the thing that I can do is clean it with uh, my cloth and see how much dirt actually comes off that. Let me take a nice clean part here squeeze it a bit look at all that now the reason you want to clean this is so that you don't have a uh, new dirt accumulation onto your new motor and uh, you can actually use 
some solvents I suppose to clean this. I like to use Electro Spray Clean or Electro Cleaner. Uh, this is a thing that I use. Uh, I suppose you can look for something similar in your area. And I just give it a one or two little squirts. And that really cleans, cleans off a lot of this dirt. I actually use a, a polishing cloth here because the polishing cloth does not leave fibers behind. Uh, if you use a cloth that uh, leaves fibers behind, you may actually introduce additional uh, vib uh, vibration or uh, wear. So, yeah, but that's just my thought. Okay, that gear is pretty clean. Okay. To get to the motor, there are two little screws. Let me just clean that off a little. Uh, two little screws. One on this side and one on that side. But before you remove those, you've got to remove this little cover. All right, and it's got a screw on that side and a screw on that side. I also do like to work on this white board of mine because it's just a, a piece of uh, Perspex board because uh, I can see the items fall and they can't roll away. So anyway, that's a small item. I'm going to pop that in there. And All right, now there's the exposed motor. Now we can already see it's a black and white wire. So we know the motor we need to choose needs to have the black and white. Anyway, you loosen this screw. These screws are truly tiny. Now, once you've uh, removed the screws, this motor just pulls out, like that. Now, there's this little plug on the motor. It can only go in one way, and you just unplug that. Right, and there you have a motor, which is now, this is the failed motor, and uh, you just take a new one, with the same cable type and we're going to plug that right in and here's a new motor here you go unfortunately the plug can only go in one way so you can't go wrong with this And there you go. Now, fortunately, this plug can only go in one way, so you can't go wrong. White's on white side, black is on black side. And then you just pop it back in there. Right, push these back in there so they just get a little out of the way. Right. And we put back the screws. It's one screw on the front, one screw on the back. Right. Tighten the screws until they are tight, but don't over tighten. You don't want to strip these uh, little screws. Uh, they are tiny and uh, yeah, there are no spares. Oops. Right, once the motors have been tightened, then you flip it around and we're now gonna put that motor cover back on. All right, and now you reinsert the gear and flip it around. Now do note, I'm actually still using um, the brass. I'm not using the bearings. As some people have suggested, after doing a little more research, I discovered that 
I would prefer to keep with a the brass. There is no play with these things. They um, really fit snugly and the performance gain is so minimal it's actually not worth it. Even though I do actually have a set of these ball bearings, I just never got around to inserting them and I like the performance as it is. Okay, um, I've now put it in. Now when you do put in the gear, put it in in such a way that these eyelets that show on the gear, I'm just going to take out the gear once more. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can get a little focus on that. Now if you look inside there, there's two little eyelets and that is where your screw turns into for the your screw turns in there and you need to get that aligned with a, the, with a prop. Okay, so we're going to insert that now I want it to the outside and I'm just going to put it in there. Alright, so I've got the eyelet to the outside. It's just a little easier for me to work with. I, I prefer it that way. Okay, to get the, um, the prop aligned, try and keep these holes pretty much across from each other. And then insert them over each other and until you can see a little light coming through. You can twist it around a little bit. That is why I also like using this white whiteboard to work on. Because now, I suppose you can't see it on the camera, but I can see through that little hole. You could probably use a pin or a thin piece of wire also to help you align it, but I'm pretty happy there. The screw is going to do the rest of the alignment for me. Okay, pop out the screw. Now, it, doesn't, it does actually help having a magnetized uh, screwdriver for um, this little part because um, these screws are tiny and they are very hard to work with. Now, you will note I've got a, a tiny little thing there. Now, that is a little neodymium magnet. It's tiny. I got them from Banggood, I think, or Gearbest. I can't remember. I ordered from both so many little things. And I attached this to the shaft of the screwdriver in cases where I do need a little magnetization, uh, such as in this case, just to keep the screw on the tip of the uh, screwdriver, where I need to insert it onto the shaft. All right. Now we're going to try and get it in there. And there we go. Now, this doesn't need to be tightened terribly. It just, just get it right down to the shaft. Don't try and turn it any further because that is all it's, it's just going to hold on to that shaft, to the, the, the prop, and so that it attaches to the shaft. And that's it. Um, the only thing is if you do use the, the lens and that part of the prop guard still, and that's the only part that you still need to reattach. And there we go. That is attached. And uh, I'm happy. Let's quickly test that. Now obviously, because this is now a new motor that, which we have just inserted here, I would suggest doing at least a two minute run in. Preferably if you can do the whole five minute running process. Look at my uh, my motor running process which I do have on a previous video. I'll put a link uh, down in the description below so that you can see how to run in these motors. Now even though the other motors have been running perfectly, this is a new motor so you need to follow the whole running process to get this one to run nicely. You are just going to get that couple of few, uh, um, more flights out of your Tarantula X6. Right, let's quickly test and see if this new motor works. I've got a battery here, I'm just going to attach. Right, this doesn't even need to be in the housing. I'm just going to focus on that one motor because that's the one I'm interested in. Let's just clean up here a little bit. Okay. And the control. Just going to move a little bit out. So you can see. And there we go. We've got an awesome little spin.
I'm just going to hold on to this so it doesn't fly away. Right, I'm going to go ahead and do my complete running process so that I get those uh, brushes settled onto that little motor and I'm going to take her out for a little flight. Hope you enjoy this video. Uh, please leave comments below or if you have questions on how this process works. But as you can see, it is incredibly simple replacing the motor on the Tarantula X6.